Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie Selleck, and today we are in Batesville, Indiana, at the St. Mark Lutheran Church. I'm joined by David Fishmer. David, thank you for uh, joining us today. Welcome. Thank you, and thanks for having us and allowing us to share some of our history and architecture of our church. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and get started. When was the first church established? The first service actually took place on January 31st, 1897. Uh, services were first held in the old Batesville Town Hall. The Town Hall stood at that time where the Batesville Memorial Building is today. The following month in February of 1897, the congregation was formally organized and many of the people that organized this church were actually from St. John's Huntersville Lutheran Church. At that time, Huntersville Church was a Lutheran church, but today is associated with the United Church of Christ. Uh, our services at that time were conducted in German, but by 1907, uh, English was starting to creep into the liturgy, and by 1927, all the services were done in English. What year was the current church built? The church was built in 1897. The cornerstone was laid August 15th of 1897. It was built by local contractors for a total cost of $7,000. Uh, a church bell then was uh, purchased in 1899, and the church was formally dedicated, though, uh, in March of 1898. David, what other improvements have been, have been done here so far? The exterior of our church has remained relatively the same throughout the years. Of course, we've done a lot of updating and maintenance on, on the exterior. Uh, the biggest change that we experienced was uh, the original steeple was made out of tin and it started to deteriorate in the late 1980s. And so a new steeple was ordered from a company in Campbellsville, Kentucky, and it was made of fiberglass. The steeple was then brought up to Batesville on a large semi, and a large crane was used to dismantle the steeple and immediately hoist the new one into place. And that is our steeple that we currently have today. David, can you tell me a little bit about these curved pews? Yes, a very unique situation. Uh, we have the two center aisles, and of course the curved pews uh, give the worshipers a feeling of warmth and closeness. Uh, these were, of course, the original pews from the church, but they were for refurbished many years ago for a cost of $12,000 by a local woodworking firm here in Batesville. Uh, some of the other things that uh, we'd like to point out are our beautiful stained glass windows. Uh, these are very unique, and they were designed by Rorden Studios from Covington, Kentucky. The glass was all cut in Germany shipped to the United States, and then leaded and assembled here at the church. And they were dedicated uh, at a special service in 1972. Uh, the total cost of the windows at that time was $24,600. Worth every penny. Worth There's a couple different symbols in, in one of the stained glass windows. Could you talk about the one that you and I specifically There are. The uh, in, the, in the one uh, large stained glass window, it has a chalice. Uh, a large cross, uh, the symbol of uh, Lutheranism, and also a white dove. And it's very nice to look at that window and, and find those images. Uh, some of the other images in the windows are, of course, our patron Saint Mark, uh, also Jesus, and of course the window that has the lion emblem, which is the emblem of Saint Mark. David, what else can you tell us about the church? Well, one of the other things I like to point out is our beautiful chancel area. Uh, with the altar, the lectern, and the pulpit, and how it can be beautifully decorated for special services like Harvest Home or with lilies and greenery uh, for either Christmas or for uh, Easter. Easter. There's a couple other features uh, in here with um, the ceiling, the, the wood in the ceiling, um, these beautiful pipes on the organ. The, the organ pipes are extremely nice and, and uh, they go along with our new organ that uh, we had installed. Uh, the wooden ceiling is very unique to, to a church of this size, and I think uh, we're very, very proud of that because of the ornate uh, scrolls and woodworking that's in our ceiling. What kind of a role has music played here within your church? 
Music has always been a very, very big part of this congregation. Um, one of the first organs was purchased in 1911 from the Heiner's Organ Company in Pekin, Illinois. It was purchased for a cost of $1,400. Uh, that, that organ served this congregation for many years and was paid for by the Luther League of this congregation, along with a special gift from the Andrew Carnegie Foundation. Whoa! Uh, the current organ that we have is a 12-rank pipe organ that was specifically built for the acoustics of this church and our ceiling by the Wicks Organ Company. Uh, it is a very fine organ and is one of the best pipe organs in southern Indiana. Uh, we're also enhanced by a Yamaha Grand Concert Piano. You and I were talking earlier just about the organ um, and how there was a change over when you brought the organ in. Are there other additions or constructions you can talk about? Well, our parsonage, which is located right behind our church, was built in 1902 for $1,914. That has been renovated and updated over the years, and of course has been a home for most of our pastors. Okay. Uh, a garage was needed in 1940, and a garage was built for $313. But probably the most recent building project that we've had was the addition of our fellowship hall. Okay. Uh, ground was broken in November of um, 1976, and was completed approximately a year later in 1977. Um, it, was co it cost $85,000, but because of a philanthropist in town, uh, we only had to borrow $12,000 to build the building. Uh, the Fellowship Hall houses a library, uh, our church offices, uh, Sunday school classrooms, a kitchen, and a fellowship multipurpose room for social and church events. Very nice. So I would imagine um, building a fellowship hall like that would absolutely put you guys in a position to be able to be a vital role in the community. Can you talk a little bit about that? Can you touch on some points where you, know, you guys are Well, St. Mark's has always been a vital part of the community. Um, we belong to the Indiana Kentucky Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, also known as the ELCA. Um, we have uh, a very active uh, group of people. Our ladies group, Welka, is very, very active. We support many local uh, organizations such as Safe Passage. Um, we also do the food pantry. We support the Wernley's Children Home in Richmond, Indiana, and many other local uh, things. We also have an endowment uh, fund that also assists people when in need. Uh, we're a small congregation, but very warm and friendly, yeah. and we offer a lot of services for our size of uh, a church, and we invite anyone to come and visit us very often. Well, I know that I've enjoyed my visit here today, and I know all of our friends watching today um, will certainly enjoy the journey as well. So, David, thank you for, for talking today about just... Um, you know, the structure of the building and the history of the building and obviously the things that you guys are doing as a church out in the community. It's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you again for having us. We've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie, and today we are in Batesville at the St. Mark Lutheran Church. I was joined by David. And David, remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.